Hi, welcome to my channel, That Houseplant Guy. My name is Toby. Um, in this today's video, actually, I want to do something I have done in previous videos a bit, but of course, spice it up a little bit. Um, I want to do another plant tour. Uh, in previous videos, I already showed like parts of my living room where I keep a lot of plants. For example, here on the on the shelf behind me, or on a different uh, on a sort of plant sh ladder shelf that I built myself, where I keep a lot of plants. And I would like to do that today again, but in my kitchen. Actually, in the kitchen itself, on the kitchen counters, I don't really have plants because I don't really have, like to have plants in a place where I prepare food. Uh, but I have a west-facing window in my kitchen, and there I do keep some plants. Um, they do quite well there, uh, west-facing window, normally they always work for me. And I thought I will show you which plants I have there, also have a hanging plant there. Um, just go through those plants, show you how they're doing, how I keep, uh, take care of them, and simply give you like a little insight into the plants I have there. So, let's do this! So guys, welcome to my kitchen. I hope you can see the plants here actually done properly. Uh, the problem is, of course, with the window behind that it uh, reflects a lot. So I hope um, the focus is still on the plant, but I think we can manage. Uh, so we start right away with the first plant here, which is my Hoya Carnosa Splash, even though I, somebody commented in a video that it might even be an actual Hoya Pubicalyx. So I'm not quite sure, even though I think the Pubicalyx, the leaves are um, not that wide, so they are more narrow. So I still would rather say it's a Hoya Carnosa Splash. Um, leave in the comments if you feel like it's a Hoya Pubicalyx, then I will accept that, of course, if you have reason to believe that it's a Hoya pubicalyx. As I said, for me, they both look very similar, so it's hard to say. Um, as you can see, I keep this one in a terracotta pot. Uh, I have this now for over over half a year, I would say. It's doing really well. Uh, since I have it, it has shot out this long stems here that hopefully will start to fill in uh, with, with new leaves come spring. It already started a bit here with new leaves. Uh, but then winter came and it stopped again, basically, but it shot out this long stance uh, that I was a bit reluctant to cut back. So as I don't really mind it and it basically it holds here on the curtain, I really don't mind it that much, so I leave it on. I really enjoy this Hoya variety simply because of the leaves. As you can see, there's this little dots and splashes on it that make me believe that it is actually a Hoya Knosa splash. Um, I really enjoy the way this foliage looks. I also enjoy that it's actually for me a quite easy care plant to be honest. Uh, I let it dry out in between waterings, almost to the root bowl I would say, and then I water it. Not too thoroughly actually, but definitely enough to really truly really soak it through, but uh, not enough for example that there's a, water, a lot of water collecting here in this little uh, tray underneath. Um, nevertheless, it really seems to enjoy this. I think definitely that terracotta was the right choice for this one. Uh, because it allows it to dry out faster and then it, it doesn't sit too long in the water. Uh, and just in my experience, something that my Hoya really enjoys is that, that it can dry out quite fast. Having said that, uh, I have another Hoya right next to it, which is my Hoya Crimson Princess, a plant that I have now for roughly a bit over a month, I would say, maybe, maybe two months. Uh, as you can see, most of the leaves are these typical Hoya Crimson Princess leaves. It has some actually that have reverted almost into a splash like it is next to it. Another leaf here that is sort of a mixture in between this one and this one. Which I also kind of enjoy and that's why I keep them next to each other because they do have some of these very similar looking leaves. Um, Care-wise I would say both basically the same. I do have this one in a ceramic pot. Um, nevertheless, basically what I do with this one is I just really check. I take it out of the of the cover pot and see if there's water underneath if I water it, uh, when I water it, just to make sure it doesn't sit in water for too long. But also this one I try not to overwater, give it enough water, but not too much so it really soaks through. That would be just too much I feel with this Hoyas. With, uh, somehow with me, I don't know why, but these Hoyas are definitely doing better if I if I keep a more restrained watering schedule and don't drown them in water right away when I water them. But rather, water maybe a bit more often, but not as much. Normally I tend to, to simply uh, let my plants that are able to, to take that to dry it out and then water them. But these ones I also let dry out, but then in between I simply do have to water again. So, But not that much and they somehow seem to enjoy it. Especially this one in a ceramic pot, I really fear that if it would sit in water too long, it would harm the plant. So I definitely keep it rather this way when it comes to watering. Uh, next to it, I have something that's actually 
well, some wouldn't say it's a, a house plant, but it is in the end something that grow inside. Uh, it is mint, so really typical mint, basically that I use for cooking and for teas. Uh, right now the leaves actually are quite small, as you can see, so they're really, really, really tiny. The leaves, uh, simply because it still keeps growing in winter now. <laughs> Uh, but the leaves that it grows are simply smaller. So what I will do in spring is basically cut it back, use those the mint that are cut back, of course, then either for cooking or for making a tea. Uh, and the new leaves will come in bigger again. So I don't have any any doubt on that. Um, so this is basically a simple little herb garden I have here in my kitchen. Uh, I had used to have more uh, that I got rid of now over winter because my basil and stuff like that. I used it up for cooking. Wasn't really anything left to, to grow back on over winter now, so I got rid of that and we'll get like new herbs come spring that we'll probably rather keep on my balcony because they tend to do better there. So right next to it, we have my succulent bonsai, so my jade or Portulacaria afra bonsai. Uh, the Portulacaria afra is the jade plant, also often called dwarf jade, that has the smaller leaves than the normal Crassula ovata jade. Uh, it is often used in bonsai, especially because it has those smaller leaves. Um, definitely something I really prepare, uh, definitely a bonsai I really prepare because it doesn't take that much care. You water it every couple of weeks actually because it is a succulent. Uh, keep it in bright sunlight. This one actually in summer I keep on my balcony. And it is uh, doing great actually. So there's really not much to say about this one. It really is doing great. Important, let it dry out in between waterings. Let it dry out thoroughly, so really the root balls should be dry in between. They are used to that. It's, that's how they live in nature or how survive in nature. So definitely let them dry out. That is not a problem with these ones. Uh, what I really like about these ones is that they almost get this wood-like uh, stem after a while. So it comes in first green and then it turns into this brown, almost bark-like stem, which I really enjoy. So, and right next to my dwarf jade bonsai, I do have my ficus benjamina. Um, also quite a, quite a small specimen in comparison. Wait, let me close the blinds here because I think it's really difficult to see. Yes, that's better. Um, uh, ficus benjamina I keep in normal soil actually covered in clay pebbles uh, to keep out fungus nets because I do like to keep this one on the, on the more moist side, definitely. It seems to do better, especially in winter now. Um, ficus benjamina, as I said, um, for me, actually, the variety of ficus that's doing best at the moment, that the other ones in winter always struggle with not with them not drying out too much. Uh, what they will do if they dry out too much is that they lose the leaves. They won't turn brown or anything. They will simply fall off while they're still green. Uh, don't stress too much about it. Uh, it's basically their natural way of dealing with uh, not enough moisture. They will basically get rid of excess foliage that will take moisture just simply to retain more of the moisture. So just uh, make sure you, you water them quite often actually because now in winter, drier air, they tend to dry out quite, quite fast. So just really make sure you keep them on the moist side and then you also will be able to, to, to make it through winter with them quite well. So ficus benjamina basically uh, also here on the west facing windowsill, it's doing really well. As you can see, there's still new leaves coming in now in winter. Also a bit smaller, but not a problem. Definitely, you can cut these ones back also very easily. Uh, and in spring, they shoot out so many new leaves. It's actually every new day that you will find a new leaf. And it grows really fast. So definitely a plant that I can also recommend. And another plant I have in here is my a bit sad looking um, philodendron, hardly philodendron. Uh, actually, it only started looking a bit sad now in winter. Some of the newer leaves have started to die back over winter. But uh, as you can maybe see here on the back, it still has a lot of very healthy foliage on it. It's only some leaves that have started to die back a bit. So I'm not too worried about I have another philodendron that has been going through the same thing last winter. It has bounced back in spring, so I'm not too worried about it. Just wanted to show you, yes. Especially in winter, many plants don't look the most beautiful, but that is not a problem. It's still one of the plants I really enjoy the most, simply because I love the way the leaves look in general, and it's growing quite fast. All this foliage here has been basically grown in, in the last two months of summer, I would say. So the whole stem basically that shot over, over the pot. So I'm really happy with this plant, and I'm not worried that it's gonna, gonna die completely. It only goes through a hot patch every winter. 
and then it bounces back in spring. So that's basically already all of the plants I have here in my kitchen. So this hanging plant and then my windowsill full of plants. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little tour through the kitchen uh, or through my kitchen or the windowsill I have in my kitchen and the plants that I have there. Uh, if you have any questions concerning these plants, of course, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, of course, also feel free to like it and subscribe to my channel. Uh, and I will see you in the next video, guys. Bye.